Hi, everyone. I'm Dale Merrill with Franklin Covey, and I'm excited to welcome you to our session today entitled, Are You Strikingly Different? I'm going to invite you to do several things to make this helpful to you. And to start off, I invite you to grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and get ready to do this little exercise I'm going to give you. So I'll give you a second to do that. All right. I'm going to show you three images of the same city. And as soon as something pops out to you on one of those images and you know what city it is, just jot that down and note which image you discovered it on, one, two, or three. Okay, here's the first image. This is a beautiful city. It's probably one of my favorite cities on the planet. This is the second image, same city, different angle, and different landmark. All right, and here's the third image, same city, different angle. So what city is this? That's right, the survey says, Sydney, Australia. What is this? Well, this is the Sydney, Australia Opera House. It is iconic. In fact, it's won virtually every architectural and design award in the world. It was dedicated in 1973, and it's so recognizable that it's come to represent not just opera in Sydney and not just the city of Sydney, but the entire continent of Australia. Let me contrast that with another opera house that's also famous. This one's been around for 100 years longer than the Sydney Opera House. It's beautiful architecture. So jot down which opera house this is. It's in Europe. I'll give you a hint. This is the Vienna Austria Opera House. It is beautiful. It's Gothic architecture, and it looks an awful lot like a lot of the other opera houses throughout Western and even Eastern Europe. So the reason I'm showing you these images is I want to define what it means to be strikingly different. The Sydney Australia Opera House is so different, different in kind than all of the other opera houses in the world, regardless of the continent, that we would call it strikingly different. When something strikingly different is something that's clearly different and better than its comparison, something that stands out. So let's bring this into our world of sales for a minute. Think about your situation and your interactions with your clients. When you have conversations with your clients, how often do you stand out? In other words, how good are you at this? On a scale of one to 10, just jot this down and you're the only person who's going to see this. So just jot it down and be honest with one being, I'm just not very good at it. I look and sound like everybody else. 10 is, I'm amazing. And when I speak, when I act, when I present things to the clients, they actually pop out. Okay, let's really make this real. I want you to imagine that you're meeting with the chief executive officer of your most important target client. You and only you can go to this meeting and you can't bring PowerPoint. Here's the question. Would that CEO see enough value out of that meeting that they would invite you back? Because if it's just an okay meeting, if it's an average meeting, it's highly likely you won't be invited back. And if you do get invited back, you're gonna be pushed down two or three levels and relegated to whoever you sound the most like. So with that backdrop, let me share something with you that really surprises. We had a unique opportunity to participate in nearly 1700 meetings between salespeople and C-suite executives around the world. In fact, we had a chance to watch about 2,800 sales professionals who were from 135 countries representing 17 different industry groups. And after each of these meetings, we had the opportunity to debrief with both the seller and then the client. So when we went and talked to the salespeople, what do you think they said? We said, how did the meeting go? Well, pretty much they'd give us a thumbs up. They'd say things like, the meeting went really well. Um, we asked great questions. We weren't perfect, but we're heading in a very good direction. We have a really good feeling about this. We really feel like we connected with the client. Then we went to the client executive. And, and just to, again, set the stage, these were all of the C-suite um, executives out there. So we had CEO, CIO, CTO, CMO, CFO, et cetera. When we went to the client executive and asked them what they thought about the meeting, 
almost to a person, we heard something like this. That meeting was a waste of my time. Ouch. Really? How could we have such a dichotomy, such a completely different view of the world where the sellers thought they were nailing it and just doing a great job. And then the client said, it just wasn't a very good meeting. Now we pushed back on these executives and we said, come on, if it was really that bad of a meeting, why didn't you just stop the meeting and send them on their way? Typically then they would soften up and they'd say, okay, well, here's the thing. Maybe it wasn't a complete waste of my time. In fact, I was looking forward to the meeting, but I just didn't have the kind of conversation and dialogue I was hoping to have. Well, that was fascinating. And we had a chance to spend hundreds of hours with these different client executives around the world, asking them what works that salespeople do and what doesn't work. How can they actually get through your filter and connect with you in a good way? So to boil it down for you to, to make this make sense, what clients are hoping for, and this is what the client executives have told us and from, from me and my fellow uh, researchers and, and practitioners, here's what we found. Clients are hoping for an apple of a different color. But what clients get is everybody looks and sounds the same. Ironically, we think we're giving the client an apple of a different color, but to the client, it all blends together. We call standing out like this strikingly different when you're an apple of a different color. When you blend in and look and sound like everybody else, we call that surprisingly average. In fact, after looking through more than 15,000 different surveys of debriefing win-loss reviews, uh, win-loss situations around the world, over an eight-year period, we found that 42% of the time, clients could not tell the difference from one vendor to another. It's no surprise then, since everybody tends to look and sound the same a lot of the time, that global win rates are 17%. So what's going wrong? Well, people aren't standing out. And so clients have a very difficult time figuring out who to work with and who would be the best choice. So if you wanna stand out, we invite you to become strikingly different. And strikingly different people do six things differently and better than their peers. These th six things enable them to radically change their client interactions and results. Would you like to know what those six things are? Here they are. We call them six vital skills to stand out and sell more. The first one is to capture attention with verbal billboards. The second one is to create excitement with movie trailers. Third, build confidence with flashbacks and flash forwards. Fourth, become essential with why us differentiators. Five, get curious and find the gaps. And six, navigate the traffic lights and close those gaps. Now today, I'm going to give you the foundation of what it means to be strikingly different. And I have time to just share with you a very brief snippet of how you can actually capture attention with verbal billboards. The end in mind for this session today is for you to see the world a bit differently, to see a fresh perspective, to think a bit differently, and then to just decide one thing you're going to change. Because I'll give you several ideas and you'll need to decide which one of these do you want to start with. Okay. So I mentioned that when everybody looks and sounds the same, we call that surprisingly average. The mindset for a surprisingly average person is, I believe people make decisions based on information they get. Contrast that with a strikingly different mindset. I believe people make decisions based on differences they can easily see. So here's the principle. People make decisions based on differences, not similarities. In fact, we actually have to show contrast so that the clients can clearly see the difference between where they are and where they could be. So if you want to bring contrast, if you want to stand out, it's as simple as this formula. R plus D plus M equals SD. Or in other words, when you're relevant and distinct and memorable, 
you will stand out as strikingly different to your clients. So let me give you one cut deeper on that. Relevant means focusing on what matters most to the client. Distinct means showing something different and better. Now, I could light my clothes on fire and I could run around in circles and that would certainly be different, but it wouldn't necessarily be better. So it has to be something different and better in the opinion of the client. And I'll give you a cut, one more cut deeper on this in a moment. Memorable means making it easy to share and hard to forget. When you can do these three things, you actually will bring the right kind of contrast that will get the client's attention and motivate them to listen. So let me give you a little bit more on this right here. How many of you would like a message that enables you to actually stand out from the competition? Well, that's one of those duh questions, right? Should be rhetorical. Of course we wanna stand out. Nobody wants to be average. Nobody wants to look and sound like everybody else. And the challenge is everybody thinks they're different. But to the client, they look a lot like a bunch of red apples. They don't stand out. So when you take this formula, R plus D plus M equals SD, I'm just going to call it the RDM formula. When you start seeing the world through that lens, every opportunity, every client and yourself and your message and your solution when you ask yourself the question, is this relevant? Is it really focused on what matters most to the client? Is whatever we're saying or whatever we're showing or whatever we're doing distinct, is it something different and better to the client? And is this memorable? Is this something that's easy to share and hard to forget? You won't find this definition anywhere else on the planet. If you look up the word distinct, you're going to find something that defines standing out. What we found after 10 years of research and working with thousands of sales professionals around the world is that's not enough. You have to first be relevant. That's the most important part of the formula times three. Then you're thoughtful about how to be distinct. And I'll give you a couple of ideas on how to make it memorable. So let's look at relevant. I want you to go on a little journey with me for a minute and imagine you have these symptoms. A month ago, you developed this rash on your arm. Let's say it's right here on your right arm. You've tried topical creams, but they only stop the itching for a few hours and it's just not getting rid of the rash. So what do we have? We have an itch. Okay, so go ahead and scratch your arm and imagine you have an itch. Second, for the last four weeks, when you wake up in the morning, you have a rapid twitch right under your right eye. It flutters nonstop for about 30 minutes and then it goes away until the next morning. So what do we have? We have an itch and we have a twitch. Well, it gets worse, folks. For the last two weeks, just before you go to bed at night, you get these severe cramps in both of your lower calf muscles. You've tried stretching, heat, ice packs, you've done everything. You've even stopped using your favorite exercise machine, whatever that is, but the cramps don't go away. So what do we have? An itch, a twitch, and cramps. All right, are you feeling it? You should be feeling annoyed right now if you're going along with me on this journey. Me too. Now imagine that we're in a world where you can actually commute to the office. Some of you are doing that right now during the pandemic and others maybe aren't doing that yet, but just imagine that you are. And on your commute, you see this message when you're on public transit. Do you have these symptoms as a result of riding the Metro? Small rash on your arm, rapid twitch under your right eye, Severe cramps in both calves at night. What? Get rid of these annoying symptoms now. Call today, 1-800-STOP-THE-ITCH. Would this message feel relevant to you? Well, it certainly would to me. So let's talk about the brain science behind this. There's something called the reticular activating system in our brain. And it's an important system. It controls sleeping, waking, and attention. When you set goals, it acts as a filter and it only lets relevant information through. So let's equate, equate this back to the little story I just told you. Let's imagine you have these symptoms. You have an itch, twitch, and cramps, and they're bugging you and you need them to stop. You've been looking around for solutions to these three problems. And you see a marketing advertisement that says, tired of dry, flaky skin? 
well, hey, yeah, this is dry and flaky, but it's itching, it's a rash. That's not gonna get through the filter. Well, this cream can smooth wrinkles under your eyes in under 24 hours. Look, I'd love to get rid of wrinkles under my eyes, but I don't care right now because I want to get rid of the twitch under my eye. It's not the wrinkles that are bothering me, but our stuff's made with all natural organic ingredients. Our lotion is, hey, I, I'm an organic guy. I'd love to have something that's all natural and organic, but I don't care right now because I need to solve my itch, twitch, and cramps. But what if you saw this? Suffering from a persistent rash, a twitch, and leg cramps? That then will get through the filter into the brain. Another quick example would be this. Have you ever decided to buy a car and you figured out the manufacturer, the make and the model, even the color? And as soon as you kind of hone in on that, you're driving down the road and you're looking around and it's like every third car on the road is that car. Wow, isn't that amazing that the manufacturer was so tuned into your brain that they were able to place those cars in your path? No, it doesn't work that way. What happened was it became relevant. So it got through the filter and all those cars that had always been there became relevant to you. And you started looking at them. Now let's come into the business world and think about your client scenarios. And you're trying to sell something that you really believe in. How can you become relevant to that client? So your message doesn't get bounced from their filter, but you can actually get through. This is not just a small thing, folks. This is the thing. How can you actually get through the filter without being cheesy or over the top or underwhelming? How do you just get right there to what's most important to your client? Well, what does it mean to be relevant then? Here's how you do it. Of course, focus on what matters most to the client. How? Immerse yourself in the likely circumstances the client's facing. Use the client's words specific to their industry, their segment, their company, and their situation. And pay attention to the emotions of the situation, the emotions they share with you. This is so rare. After watching nearly 2,000 interactions, we, we realized that this is a very common occurrence. In fact, I mentioned the stat that 42% of the time clients can't tell the difference between vendors. When we flipped it to the other side and said, when you did pick someone, even though it was very difficult, what was the biggest deciding factor? By a factor of three, literally three times the most important variable, relevant popped up. The client said, the winners, I felt like we, they knew us better than the other folks, by far. And they described our situation with our words and our phrases, and it, they made us feel like they were part of the team. And so with that, that's about being relevant. The final thing is know the difference between symptoms and impact. A symptom is something like an itch, a twitch, or cramps. And impact is how much that's affecting your life. So symptoms is another word for evidence. What evidence is there that your clients might have problems they need to solve or results they need to achieve? And impact is the consequence. So it's evidence, impact, symptoms, and impact, um, or you could also call it proof. So proof, evidence, and symptoms are the same thing. Impact and consequence are the same thing. So with that in mind, let's move to distinct. What does it mean to be distinct? Well, it means you stand out as something different and better. And one of the best ways we found to do this is to use from two headlines that clearly show something different and better to your clients. When you do that, you juxtapose two things together. The clients with their powerful brains paint vivid imagery, almost like you're watching it on a big screen of what it feels like and looks like in the from state and what it feels like and looks like in the to state. So here's some examples of headlines. These are three different uh, ex examples. Our real clients, by the way, we work with clients all over the world. We work with some of the most admired companies in the world, all the way down to startups. And in these three industry segments, uh, you probably know at least two of these companies. The third one you might not know, but the first one is a customer relationship management platform company. And their surprisingly average headline before we started working with them was, you can make resource decisions faster. It seems like what everybody could say. The strikingly different headline popped the contrast between from and to. Cut the time to make resource decisions from more than four weeks 
to less than two hours. Professional services company working in IT. The average headline is streamline your maintenance ticket process. And the strikingly different headline is go from solving maintenance tickets to avoiding them altogether. That particular headline won a $78 million piece of business on a recurring annuity that's continuing to this day. And there's a lot beneath it. I'm just giving you the tip of the iceberg, of course, um, but, but that main thing became the win thing. And a farming cooperative, their, the surprisingly average headline for them was close the books much faster than you're already doing. The strike and the different headline actually tapped into emotions because they were expressing, the client was expressing all of this frustration and, and, and dissatisfaction with the status quo. So you can go from the stress and frustration of closing the books in six weeks to the relief and satisfaction of closing them in five days. And that became the winning headline for a large piece of business. So we've talked about relevant, we've talked about distinct, let's talk about memorable, and I'll just give you a quick example. If you can use a visual metaphor or a short story related to everyday life, it will become very, very memorable in the minds of your clients. For example, you can go from a diesel locomotive to a bullet train. I had a client that was a technology provider and they were pitching a full technology transformation to their client. And they used the metaphor that their client was currently really, everything was working fine, but it was slow and stodgy, just like a, a diesel freight train. And they painted the picture for their client by saying, imagine instead of going from zero to 60 in about three to four minutes, you can go from zero to 325 miles per hour in five seconds. In other words, with your technology that we're talking about, if you transform what you're doing, you can be sleek and address all of the challenges you've described in a unified way to get to your destination quicker. It became a very winning win theme and they actually won uh, in a very competitive situation. So here's the formula. If you want to be strikingly different, be relevant, distinct, and memorable. Almost repeat that like a mantra. Make it up into a song and put something in your mind so that you can remember that and look at everything through that lens. It will dramatically change your outcomes. Now, let me give you some practical examples of how to be relevant, distinct, and memorable. And I'll do that in the context of skill one, which is capturing attention with verbal billboards. Now, have you ever been driving down the road and you noticed a billboard and it was so compelling that you looked over at the image or the words and you almost crashed, or at least you swerved? I've done that quite a bit. I tend to look at billboards because I like the marketing messages. The advertising industry has figured out how to capture attention quickly. We borrowed a, a note from them and we have applied this throughout the world with great effect. So here's the mindset shift from surprisingly average. I think and speak in a way that seems unique, but really sounds just like everybody else. Strikingly different. I think and speak in a way that shows clients where they are now and where they could go as is and to be, or as is and could be. The principle behind a billboard is to be concise. We live in a very complex information overloaded world. So the more concise you can be, the more you will stand out to your clients. These are the three principles of a verbal billboard. First, think and speak in headlines. Second, link to the client's goals and issues. And third, show from to client outcomes. Verbal billboards are not a lengthy rambling list of facts, data, and bullet points focused on you, your company, and your solutions. I'm going to, to put a couple more headlines on here, three actually, and you, tell, you write down which of these you like. So we will help you lower your risks. Let's say that you chose that as a marketing message. We'll call that message A. Message B. We will help you substantially lower your risks. Which of those do you like better? There's only really, there's one word different. Not terribly compelling. But imagine a cybersecurity situation where you're talking to a client that's had a breach or they're worried about having a breach. And you say this, you, client, can go from 4,300 vulnerable open ports to one protected port. 
we'll call that choice C, which would be your favorite. For me, it would be choice C because it pops the from and the to. Here's the thing. If there isn't a point of comparison, your statement is a waste of breath. It's just as if you didn't say it at all. Using good from to comparisons helps your clients remember your different and better outcomes. So if you're trying to be relevant, distinct, and memorable, and you can't think of a visual metaphor, we have found that at least using from to comparisons, that will get it done. That's the secret sauce, and it makes a huge difference if you do it the right way. So here's an example of a billboard, and let's imagine the headline is, you can decrease access risk. So here's a quiz for you. I want you just to do this on your scratch piece of paper. Does this statement show contrast between a current situation and a dramatically better future state? The answer is no. It's a statement. It doesn't have any comparison. What about this? You can go from exposed and vulnerable to invisible and protected. How about that? Does that show contrast between current state and better future state? Absolutely. So hopefully you get the idea on that. Two examples. Here's the context. You're meeting with a client. It's a global media company, and they're dealing with three digital platform challenges. And right now, let's imagine you're a technology consulting firm, okay? And their challenges are this company is deploying apps, and it's just taking too long. And they're backing up and moving data to different clouds and back to on-prem. And it's really tough and it's full of errors. And the third thing is their data analytics are too slow and cumbersome. So what could a verbal billboard sound like? Let's imagine you get this information through conversations that you've been uh, having with a couple of people in the company, or maybe with colleagues. You've done some work on their website. You've read some of their public filings and press releases. However you, you've done it, you've come up with this information. So your verbal, what would your verbal billboard sound like? It could sound something like this. You can go from moving slow to digital speed. You can do that in three ways. First, what if you could actually test and deploy your apps in just hours and days, not weeks and months? Second, what if you could back up and restore to the cloud 90% faster than today? Would that make a difference for you? And third, what if you could automate your data analytics and beat the competition by 30x? Now, the rest of the backstory here is this client in a couple of preliminary meetings were constantly saying, we are so slow. We, we have to speed up. This company was a company that served up news stories to 24 by 7 media outlets. And whoever got the story uh, written the best way and served up through the app for these various media clients, they would win the business. And so this billboard taps into the words that we heard them say and that were on their webs. Well, they didn't say they were moving slow, but we heard them say, and we heard them say that digital speed was the thing for them. So this became a very winning thing. One more example here. Here's the context. And by the way, these are real examples. We've just cleansed the names to protect our clients. These are real clients that we work with. So imagine you're meeting with a large healthcare system that operates 25 hospitals, managed care, and they have other medical services. They're looking to improve their efficiency and lower risk by doing these things. First, they want to secure access for any user on any device to any approved resource. Sounds reasonable. Second, they want to secure access to critical systems and data. And finally, they need a plan for their mergers and acquisitions because they were very acquisitive and they were doing this about at least two times a year, they were adding another large um, chunk of their, to their system. What could a verbal billboard sound like that would be compelling to say the chief financial officer? Uh, so to the chief financial officer, you can accelerate your M&A network integration time from the current months and years to just days and weeks. You can do that by first going from months and years tying your systems together to days and weeks. That's the main headline. The second, you can go from significant investment in a new security stack to utilizing your existing tech investments right now. And third, you can go from a cumbersome, slow remote access process for advents to a simplified streamlined process. This became winning messages that turn into a large piece of business for our clients. So the key takeaways from verbal billboards are to think and speak in headlines. 
link to the client's goals and issues. Make sure you're focused on them and show from two client outcomes using both the metric of outcomes, results to be achieved. Also, you can think about emotions and you can think about the symptoms. Here's what it is today and here's what it could feel like tomorrow. Now, that's a pretty quick run through some ideas of how to be strikingly different with a focus on verbal billboards. The end in mind that I invited you to consider 30 minutes ago was to see a fresh perspective, to think a bit differently, and to decide just one thing you'll change. So of all the things I've covered, including the relevant, distinct, and memorable, and specifically on billboards, what are you going to do to make a difference in your personal life and for your team and for your company? I've only briefly covered verbal billboards just because we don't have a lot of time here today. If I could be helpful to you or we at Franklin Covey can be helpful to you, uh, send me a note. We would love to help you. We have found that the more we can help our clients get good at practicing these things, so they get it in their mind and then they practice it, the better they do to get it into their DNA and make it a consistent practice. And that's when the results become pretty astounding. So uh, here is the, uh, my LinkedIn. I'd, if you, if you, I'd love to link with you on LinkedIn. So connect with me, send me a message or send me an email if we could be helpful to you. And I wish you great success on your journey to become strikingly different. Thanks. Hope to talk to you soon.